welcome back and today we're going to be talking about arrays and functions so i was supposed to cover that in a previous video but it was getting too long so this got put into a separate section and so what we're going to do is focus on how you pass arrays to function or you return arrays from function and then some potential pitfalls or things you should know about when you use arrays and function whether you're returning them or passing them to a function so I'm sitting there in my prompt and so I want to start off where we left off yes on in the previous video so I'm gonna copy uh, the previous lesson uh, 02 uh, section 3 and then I'll see to 3 um, okay so I'm doing open up my code editor here and so we're talking about arrays and functions today how to pass them how to return them um, some of the gotchas that you need to be aware of so okay so we'll, we'll get to that so this is what we look like right now we have um, a constant here that says 10 and we can define an array of um, 10 values and um, a 10 element array of integers and so what we want to look at now is how do we um, use an arrays and function how do we um, how do we, let's say, for example, have uh, first our array, our, um, this array be returned from a function? So that's the first one. So we're going to write a function here. Let's call it um, function generate um, or gather data, uh, collect data, uh, get test data, sorry, get test data. And so it doesn't take anything, any parameter, for example. I mean, optionally, we could say um, we could pass in um, how many uh, things, but we don't know. This is going to um, not take any data, and um, it's going to return an array. So we know it's how we, we put our return value here. So we want to return is size, you know, int array. Uh, if we had multiple parameters, remember that we, could, we have to put these in parentheses. But so that's it. Um, and of course, we can give it a name if we want. So we can call this, you know, uh, data if we want. Um, but um, we need to return um, this this array. And so let's just move this from here. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, sorry. Huh. So. I'm going to move this here and I'm going to call this uh, data and since it's already declared as my return type I only need to assign to it and then return okay um, actually I don't even need to say the return statement but um, well, since my thing has return I should say, say return okay all right and um, what's it complaining uh, unexpected at the top level of declaration. Uh, let's see. Come on. So data is uh, good. So there you go. I put my parentheses there. So now this doesn't know um, about test results. So um, in this function, I'm going to say um, var test result is equals to get test data All right and so now this is going to call this function get test data which is going to return this and now we're going to be able to manipulate it so i should expect this should run the same way uh, let me shorten my prompt uh, a little bit here so i should say go run main and this should work the exact same way um, so nothing fancy there so you could see that returning a array from a function works just fine now um, what is really happening here we're actually saying that we want to return a 10 element array from this function now we could actually not use we don't have to use that we can have used we could have used this we could actually put the 10 there and um, that would work fine also right um, because this value is defined to be 10. If ever we change this to 11, however, now we have a problem um, because, um, see, um, we have two different size um, 
arrays. This one is 11. We try to return an uh, array of 11 integers. And here we're saying that we're going to return an array of 10. So these are actually two different types. So the, the size of the array is actually part of the type. All right. And that's important to remember. It doesn't like truncate it in any way whatsoever. So, okay. So we could fix that by always putting the size here. So that's if we, we change the size there, um, you know, um, it still works fine. So that's, that's one way to go around things. Um, but more than that, it's, um, we really want to try and see when you return a value from a uh, function, what is really happening? A copy of this, whatever data is, is being passed out and stored here. And to, to see this, this always happens when you do a return and even when you, do, you call a function with a parameter. We can get to, the, to that in a minute. So what about if we wanted to add a curve to our test result or maybe do some kind of operation on it and um, bump it up by one or something. And so let's do that. Let's say that here, actually, um, before we do that, let's say that we want to pass the result into test function. So here we want this to um, be uh, test results. And it should take a array of size int. And so we're going to move this up now to here. And we're going to call this data. And then we're going to say we pass data here. So what I'm doing now is in my main, I'm calling the get test data, assign it to this variable data, and then pass that into thing. And you can see um, that my program doesn't complain. My um, aesthetic analysis and so um, we're fine so that that works fine too in terms of passing an array in so we can return an array very easily we can assign and pass an array in as a parameter but what what I really want to get to though is this I want to spend a second just to look at this let's just play with this for a second let's say I have var a is equals to uh, this guy and then I'm going to create, um, I'm going to say B is equals to A. So now I have an array called A, then I'm assigning it to B, and then I'm going to say um, B of 0 is equals to 0, B of 1 is equals to 0, and B of 2 is equals to 0. So I've made some changes to B. The question I'm, I want to ask is, when I make this, these changes you know, on B, am I affecting the array A? So let's see. So the only way to really see that is to print it out. So I print len and I'm do, um, this is A. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and this is B. And so if A and B, are the exact same when I print it out, then we know that when you assign an array to a, a variable, somehow it's referencing the same underlying data structure. If they're different, it means that they're not. And we can see here, A and B are not the same. So the only reason they cannot be the same is because a copy, when I did this assignment here, a actual copy of all these elements were made into B. Um, so a new array was created and the elements copied into it. This is important to know because if you have a really, really big array, let's say you read a file with bytes or something like that, this was a big array of bytes, and you assign it, that's a value. You're making a copy. So you want to keep that in mind. And so the reason why I wanted to spend time looking at this to illustrate this is because that exactly happened when you pass an array to a function. When I take, get an array from this function, a copy of that array is made to return. So there's this is, if you can actually look at this in memory, there's an array here that's allocated in memory. Then a copy of that array is made to return here into this variable. Eventually, the garbage collector in Go will clean up this array because it's going to see, oh, this function return and I don't actually need it. It may be doing some other clever things behind the scene, but you want to think of it as the return actually makes a copy. Um, here, now that I have this variable here in main, so main is pointing to this array of 11 elements. And when we make this function call, main hasn't ended yet when we call this function. Main has to wait until this function returns before it ends. So the, a copy of this array is made so that it can be given to print 
um, test data. And we know this is because we can do this. We can say, I want to print out, because so we, we know that our, when you assign it, um, it's two different things. We just proved that. So let's show that our, when you pass it to a function, this exact same thing happen. So we can say main, we want to print data, which is the, the data that's inside of main. Main that data, let's just call it that, so we know. And um, inside of this print thing, we're going to, again, assign, look at what we're doing. In 8, we're going to assign 5 and 12, and then um, we're going to make some modification to it. So we're going to see if our printout from main, main data, has these changes, you know, 110 and so on. And so we run it, and we should expect no, because we proved, showed before that, look, um, you can see no changes in the main data here of, you know, 110 or 9999. So that proved that a copy of data was made and passed into print test result. That's important because if you have really big arrays that you pass into functions, then know that our copy is being made. So um, we're going to want to think, keep that in mind. Um, arrays are nice and easy to use, unlike like C or C++ where the name of the array points to the very first element and that sort of thing. No, you're not dealing with a pointer. However, if you want to, let's say for example, affect the change of the array from inside of print result, you should actually pass, pass a pointer to this array, right? So you should say, I'm passing a pointer, right? And now you can say, well, this is a pointer, take the address of this data and pass it in um, to test, print test fun result. And because I'm point, passing a pointer to the array, which is just the address where this array is located, can we cover about pointer and stuff in chapter two? What's going to happen is now notice in Go, you don't have to do any sort of uh, dereferencing for that pointer. You will simply uh, use it as it is, just like this, okay? And so, <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so now, if we run our code, we'll see it all. Yep, main data also got changed. That's because we we passed a pointer to um, you know the the function that we want, and then we um, were able to um, access it here. Okay, and when we make those changes, it actually changed the one that's in main. So this is more efficient. So if I had a really, really long array, I would definitely, and I want to pass that function to do, make some changes, or even just pass this function for the function to operate on it, if I want to avoid a copy, I should definitely think about passing a pointer to that data. So okay, so that allows us to get around the issue now of if you pass in a, lar a large array around. So we know how to um, do that. That but is what is the conclusion of this section. Arrays in Go language are valued. So if you assign them, you're making a copy. And so you want to be, remember this so that if you have a large array, you want to pass it to a function or you want to return it from a function, you should definitely consider using pointer or what we're going to cover next, slices. Um, that's the big takeaway from this section. Again, I hope you learned something. Thanks for your time. See you in the next um, section very soon. And keep learning, keep practicing, spread the word. Take care. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Bye.